If I search how to freeze on YouTube and click on almost any one of these videos, this is what I get. A graphic attempting to show people how many minions you should use to freeze. I say attempt, first of all, because this graphic is wrong. Um, if you use three minions here, it's, it's almost always going to turn into a slow push. And secondly, this graphic, it's not specific enough. Um, same here, if I click on pro guides, I'll get the exact same thing, right? People look at this graphic, these graphics, listen to pro guides or skill capped, and then start freezing using only this amount of minions. But the reality is, if possible, you shouldn't freeze with this number of minions. You should be freezing with more. In fact, what the graphic actually shows is the absolute minimum number of minions you need to freeze. The rule you should be following is freezing with as many minions as possible, which you can control depending on the matchup, with the minimum being the graphic, assuming it was correct. So I have coached hundreds of coaching clients now, and almost every single one of them has replied to my question of how to freeze with the answer, use three to four minions, and their freezes always end up broken. So what I'm showing in this clip is freezing with more than four minions, and I maintain this freeze for about five minutes, only breaking it when I actually choose to. The first step in my thought process is, how many minions can I actually hold and defend in this matchup? Well, Garen is relatively weak, right? And I have strong items uh, in a pickaxe, bam scepter, and tabai at the moment. I have a lot of armor and sustain I can use to hold the wave as well. If the minions hit me, I could simply use my Vamp Scepter and potions to heal. So I use a, I, I use a lot of minions, right? This is why Vamp uh, Refill Pot is so broken. But why is it important to use a lot of minions? Well, what if Garen walks up and I want to queue him or all in him, but then I accidentally hit the minions with my trade, with my AOE trade? Well, then immediately the freeze is broken because I'm no longer at that minimum threshold of four full HP minions because my Q has hit them. But if I have more minions than that, above the minimum threshold, there's a buffer where even if I hit the minions by accident, the freeze isn't instantly broken and I could still trade. This is usually the most common way people lose their freezes. Of course, you could argue that I should be trading my AoE away from the wave, standing away from it over here or something, but that isn't always possible. Lastly, something important that not a lot of people know is that where possible, you should be freezing with caster minions and not freezing with melee minions. If you're thinning a wave, if I just go back and show you me thinning the wave, whereas over here, notice how I'm thinning the melee minions. Um, Riot thought for some reason that it would be funny if melee minions like to randomly run it down under tower with the aggro. Basically, casters don't do this. Um, if you freeze with melee minions, they might just run it down under tower and die and break your freeze. But So what you should always be doing is prioritizing freezing with caster minions so that you don't have this option happening. But yeah, see how I'm always thinning the melee minions. So, TLDR. Four minions is the bare minimum amount of minions you should freeze with, not the amount you should use every time. Always do more where possible, and the number of, is based on how many you can control in the matchup. Do this based on sustain, items, champions, everything. You need more minions because that provides a buffer in case you ac your trade accidentally hits the wave or some bullshit happens and the freeze isn't instantly broken. Do not freeze with melee minions. They run it down under tower, unlike casters. Combine this with pulling the wave upwards into the bushes like I did. And finally, stop blindly listening to pro guides and skill capped.